So just finding your feet this morning. Good morning. And welcome to this beautiful sunny day, this sunny Sunday. Today we're working on upper back, neck and shoulders, and we're going to uh, bring in a little bit of hips as requested. So just finding your feet, bending your knees, tracking the knees over the second toes. And inhale, radiating out like the sun. And exhale through the center from the top of the head all the way down to the feet. Once you do that, draw the belly in. Inhale, radiating out. Exhale, aligning in. Inhale, expanding out. And exhale, drawing in towards your center. Just do this in your own timing a few more times just to arrive here on the mat. Starting to expand first, lengthen the exhale. We're going to work with the inhale later, but first finding the ground. So try to really draw in from the pelvic floor to the belly button. Maybe lengthen the exhale by a second or two and inhale, expanding out, radiating like the sun. Exhale, perhaps visualizing the trunk of a tree or water coming down. And inhale, visualizing the branches of the tree, the leaves, these beautiful green leaves growing at this time of year. Feeling the roots of the tree at the feet. And just one more time, inhale, radiating out, sweeping your arms through those branches of the tree. Feeling the sun above. And exhale, bring the hands to the heart, connecting to that inner sun, that inner light. Inhale, opening the heart center. Drawing those shoulder blades together. You can have your palms up or facing me or down. Just notice which feels better for your neck and shoulders. And exhale, bringing the hands to the heart. You can place the hands flat on the heart center or in namaste or in another position that you might discover for yourself. We're going to add on to this exhale, inhale, radiating out like the sun, connecting to that inner light. Ooh. Inhale, expanding out. Exhale, drawing in. Oh. Inhale, radiating out. Exhale, centering. at that part, that metaphorical part at your center. Feel like you're gazing down into that center. Just notice how 
it's feeling this morning. Does it feel soft or does it feel tight? See if you can notice anything. Does it feel closed like this or does it feel soft and open? Just notice where you're at. Don't try to change it right now. Just notice where you're at. Can you feel your heart beat? just a little bit. Are there any thoughts running through your head right now? Just noticing what they are, their quality. And then maybe make an intention. Asking yourself, what is my deepest heart's desire right now. What is that I would want, I would like to link to, manifest, experience, do. And maybe it's nothing, maybe it's rest or you wanna do nothing. Or maybe it's something. Just ask the question, what is my heart's deepest desire right now? Might be a word. So for me, the word comes serve. So what's your word this morning? Maybe it's an image or a sentence. And when you're ready, release, bringing your feet together. Inhale, <clears throat> excuse me, arms coming up, radiating out, maybe coming onto your toes. And exhale, coming down. Now, as you do this, you can add niyasam, which we worked on last week. So I'm going to show that. Keep going. Inhale, the thumb going up, the index finger. And exhale, the index finger going down the thumb. And then you flick at the end. And you keep doing this up each finger. Inhale, thumb going up the middle finger. Exhale, middle finger down the thumb. At the end of the exhale, flicking. Inhale up the ring finger. It is helpful if you remove any rings you have. <laughs> if you have any rings on. Exhale, ring finger down the thumb. And flick. And inhale, thumb up. The little finger. Exhale, little finger down the thumb and flick. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can just hold the fingertip during the inhale and the exhale like that, or any of the knuckles actually you can press into, okay? So let's try that together. Hopefully you got four at least. Inhale, thumb up the index finger. It's called Nyasam. It's a classical practice from India. 
and exhale the finger down the thumb. Now, what I find really interesting is my attention tends to all go to my left hand just naturally. So I try with my attention to shift my focus sometimes to my right hand. I think I'm probably doing a little bit of EMDR by doing this, just balancing the brain. I tend to be, I have a lot of awareness of my left, but not a whole lot of my right. And so I just try to bring my attention and I draw it over to that right side. So if you have that, you can play with that as an experience. Just doing the other side. And then if you can feel both, can you feel both at the same time? We're trying to press as hard as possible. This really strengthens the hands. And it is said to help clear the nadis, the little rivers of energy. That's a yogi perspective. In terms of physiology, we're likely flossing the nerves that go from the hands through the arms into the upper back, neck and shoulders. So there's three nerves. And release. Okay, so notice how you feel. That's quite a bit of work. So I know some of you have some stuff going on with your hands. So that's a great one. And the other one we'll try to work with today, um, this kind of, these are mudras of different sorts. So we'll try to work a little bit with some mudras. Uh, it's kind of fun. Let's warm up the hands a bit more as we work into the neck and shoulders. So inhale, radiating out. I like to stretch the fingers apart. These hands of ours, like our feet, they do so much work for us and we kind of ignore them until they hurt. Inhale, I don't know about you, but it's like, oh, right, my poor hands. Interlock those fingers and stretch the hands up, the palms up, come up nice and tall. Exhale, coming down, and place the top of the hands on the top of the head and drop those shoulders down. I'm bringing my heels down just so they hover above the ground. Inhale, stretching up. And exhale, coming down, drop those shoulders. So I'm keeping the fingers interlocked the whole time. There you go. It seems like all of you can do this. Inhale up. Chin in at the top of the inhale and exhale down. Really focus on dropping the shoulders at the end of the exhale. Inhale up. And exhale down. And last time coming up. And can you stay here? It's too much, release. My arms might be getting tired. This is also quite strengthening for the arms. It's also helping with um, lymphatic drainage. There's a lot of lymph nodes underneath the armpits. So every time we're working with the arms and the shoulders and this kind of movement, we're actually helping drain some of um, moving the lymph rather, and moving toxins out of the body. Exhale, release. And notice how you feel. All right, let's move to the side now. Inhale, coming up, you can come on the toes or not, that's your choice. And exhale, coming to one side. Now we're gonna get into the hips a bit as well. So notice, the stretch through those intercostal muscles between the rib cage, and then maybe into the hip, if you bend that knee of the direction you're coming to, you'll be able to get more into the hip. And then inhale center. And exhale other side. And again, bending the knee of the side you're coming to, this is a recent thing I discovered when I put my back out. I was doing this, oh, I don't know, like 50 times a day to uh, get out of my back spasm. And it was very, very effective. All the things I did, 
This was a new one that I discovered. So you can focus on the hip or you can keep your attention on the upper back. You can have your palms together like this or you can release. So your choice on that, you can also hold opposite elbows. Sometimes that can really get into the upper back. And then the next one, we're gonna stay, if that works for you, or you can keep it moving. Every time we stay, feel free to keep it moving if it feels better for you. So please do modify with the variation that works for you. Um, I keep showing different things. I hope during the classes you find things that work for you and you keep those going. So that's how you make it your practice. I like to cross the feet. You don't have to. So the side I'm on, side my hands are coming to, I'm crossing that foot over. Some people like to cross the other foot. So that's another option. I'm using the wall. That's a bit more intense. You can keep it moving, of course. Inhale, exhale on one side. If you've got a shoulder injury, I see some of you still moving. So yeah, if you've got any nerve stuff going on, uh, moving is always better. And if it feels good, it is a warm day. So usually you can get into the stretches a bit more and release. This is uh, like, the temperature it is in Chennai when I go there in the winter today. Other side, inhale, arm up, exhale, coming over, perhaps crossing that foot over of the side you're on. You can stay here or move in and out. For example, inhale and exhale. And release. Coming back to the center. You might feel a little taller having done that. These sides of our body tends to get compressed. We're going to add a rotation now. I'm going to have my feet together so I can squeeze my thighs together. You might have them apart. So bringing the arms to the center. So you're going to inhale, bringing your arms up first overhead. Exhale, bringing your hands down in the center. Inhale, arms to the sides, palms down. Exhale, you're going to rotate towards your left. Now you can leave your arms like this or bring that top that front hand to your back shoulder. You can twist your hips with the pose or you want to isolate the upper back. Keep the hips forward and try to twist just the upper back. Inhale, center. Draw those shoulder blades together. Again, you can come up on the toes if you want to add that. Palms facing down. Exhale, coming to the side. You can keep up on those toes if you want as well. Keep the hips center and looking to the side. I usually bring my heels down at the end so I can twist a bit more. Draw that belly in. Feel the back of the shoulder having a nice twist. Inhale, center. And just going side to side. Doing this in your own time. And this one is from Krishnacharya. This is from Chennai. Lots of variations he taught of this. Um, another student of his, Sri Vasta Ramaswamy, he's in his 80s now, and uh, he teaches a version where it's just like this. And he actually moves the hip, which is interesting for me. But a little bit more into your upper back if you don't move the hip. So you can play with that. It's just different. These are just choices that you can make according to your body. So make those choices. Just see what works for you today. Anything I say is just a possibility. And I really invite you to find what works for you today. It might be different each day. It certainly is in my own practice. Notice the effect on the neck and shoulders as well. 
That's one of the reasons I really like that. It's really getting to, to the neck. I'm just going to do one more round. Some of you are getting tired, I can see. And exhale, release. Okay. So we're just gonna stretch the neck a little bit. So let's just bring it to the left. Where we worked it dynamically. We're just gonna stay now. Something I do, don't do much of, just staying on one side. And if it's comfortable, you can bring the same hand as the side you're on, try to bring that knee towards the shoulder. To see how that feels to stretch. You can stretch the opposite hand away as you exhale. Inhale, release a little bit, exhale, or you can just stay like this. If your exhale would be like that, adding a little bit of nerve flossing, inhale center. You could even add this whole floss if you like. Or you could just stay. So you can keep it moving. I'll just show the movement. So we did something like this last week. I just want to show you this in Tadasana. And you can have that hand going back and front and all those pieces we worked on. I think I'm going to do that one today. That's what my neck is saying. You can see most of you are wanting to move. So I'm going to do the movement version. So I'll just review uh, the hand position. The floss, like flossing your teeth, you want to go both ways with the neck. Exhale side, fingertips up. That's step one. Inhale, center, opposite ear to shoulder. And you feel this side of your neck now. And then exhale, you go to the center and then fingertips back towards the window behind me. And inhale, center, scooping to the heart. And then exhale, going through the center and then tipping those fingertips forward. So this nerve flossing you can do anytime. And then maybe let's just see if you want to stay. So it is nice. Uh, thank you for your cameras on. It does um, help me get an idea of where I should go when I start something. Inhale center. If I see the class is going somewhere else, I change. Exhale, release. So again, you could stay on this side. As I invited you on the other side, just checking out how this side of your neck feels. And then the opposite hand. And then we're going to do that flossing because um, that's what I saw you guys doing. Inhale center. I'm just going to release that top hand. And exhale side. You can have that top hand if you like. Fingertips center. We'll do two rounds of this. Inhale. Other side. Exhale, bringing the fingertips back and the palm slightly back, shoulder slightly back. So you feel something in the palm. Inhale, center. And exhale, side, fingertips forward, draw that belly in. Inhale, center. And then I'm going to stay for a little bit. If that doesn't work, you can keep it moving. So during that stay, try to get the ear coming to the shoulder. You can have the opposite hand away. Yeah, good. Some people like to nod their head, exhale, chin in, inhale. That's another variation. Can you feel good? And when you're ready, release. I'm going to work the head down. So I'm trying to go into the neck and the um, head a little bit more today. So hands behind like this. Now this might not feel good for you. If it doesn't, you can release those hands again. That's your exhale. And then inhale, coming up, 
opening and pressing into the hands and opening the shoulders. So try to open those elbows and just lift the chin just a little bit. I'm very, very, I'm not going all the way back, just a little bit. And I'm pressing a little bit isometrically into those hands and exhale, release. So you can just go up and down or you can add a hold after the inhale and add a little bit of that. Pressing the back of the head into the hands as you open those shoulders. And exhale, release, be careful. It might not feel good for you. It's nerve flossing of the neck. So I learned about this nerve flossing of the neck from a physiotherapist and then I integrated my knowledge of yoga therapy into it. And I always find it interesting which shoulder I feel when I do this opening, you might feel both, that's great, but if you have one shoulder different than the other, you might feel one is really um, working quite a bit harder than the other. And last one. Okay, release. Okay, so hopefully you feel quite a bit going on right here, the throat area. We're gonna just do a rest with a mudra. So this is a mudra, I've been learning mudra means seal. So um, take your left hand, I'm not gonna mirror it because I don't think my brain can handle that this morning. Take a left hand, your left hand, take your right hand, I will try in a minute. Take your right hand and hold that thumb and then come across like this, and it looks like a conch shell. So let me see if I can do it. Okay, so this is your left hand, this is your right hand, and then you cross it. All right, I did it. Now you're gonna put that at your throat. This is a mudra, this is a conch shell, and conch shells, you put them to your ear and you hear something like the sound of the ocean. So this uh, um, represents sound connecting to the element of akasha called in sanskrit it means space the conch shell is held by many of the gods and goddesses of the veda culture representing the vedas hearing those mantras those words of wisdom think of the space that connects everything together might be the glue of the universe, the space between things, between the atoms, space within you. And just notice if you feel any energy as you do this. I find this very soothing. Usually start feeling some flow of prana or energy. This can be used for thyroid issues. It's called Udana Vayu, the energy of the throat. The energy goes up and out. It's our speech, it's our willpower. It's supposed to help said to help with balancing hormones. And we're gonna release. We'll come back to that as a rest. I don't want to teach that today. So we're gonna move into warrior. Coming to the back of your mat area, you're gonna bring your left foot forward, your right foot turned out. Now, if you wanna work a bit more with the hips, if you can, you can make the stride a bit bigger. And that back foot will have to work harder too, the bigger you make your stride. So just be aware it might be too much, looping the little toe side of the back foot down. So inhale, warrior one, bending that knee over the ankle. Exhale, release, straighten the front leg, stretch the hands away. We did this last week. Inhale, fingertips together. This is a different version of it. Fingertips together. 
bending that front knee, draw the elbows back, exhale, release, hands forward. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, starting position. So that's one round. So I'm just doing a little bit differently today. Inhale, warrior one. Just get into those hips a bit more. Virabhadrasana. Exhale, release. Bring the hands forward. Inhale, bringing the fingertips together. Now you might find being slightly forward works better for your body or standing up straight. This works better for mine, but you might find this works better. It depends on the body. Exhale, release. Stretch those fingertips forward. I've got my thumbs crossed to help me do that better. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, release. It's round two. We're going to do four rounds. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, straighten the leg. Hands forward. Inhale, fingertips together at the throat, elbows high, exhale, release. Inhale, warrior one, exhale, arms down. Last time, inhale, feel that little toe side of the back foot, exhale, hands forward. Inhale, fingertips together, elbows up and back, shoulder blades towards each other. Exhale, release. Looking down or looking straight, your choice. Inhale, warrior one. And exhale, we're going to come into a forward fold. Inhale, coming up, straight leg or bent. Exhale for a bend. So you can do it with coming in and out of warrior or just Parshvat Uttanasana. So version one, warrior one, and exhale forward bend. Version two, keep the front leg straight. That's definitely harder. You can interlock the fingers as well to help keep the two shoulders in alignment. Doing this six times. You could do this with blocks or a chair, of course. And last time we're going to stay. We're just staying here or inhale, lift the chest and look forward. The flossing in upper back, neck, and shoulders. Exhale, release. This also helps you lengthen the spine or just stay. And if you are working with your hips, this is really working the right lower back and hip quite a bit. When you're ready, coming up, you can bend the front knee or not. And exhale, coming back. Ooh, that was a big stride. A little harder coming back when you've got a big stride. We're going to do that whole thing on the other side. Right foot forward, left foot turned out. So I know you can follow me, but trying to kind of memorize what I do on one side and doing it on the other is helping your brain. So um, do try to kind of remember what you can, like, oh, she's about to do that. When I take a class, that's what I do. I try to memorize it right away because it, it really does work the brain. Inhale, bending that front knee over the ankle, bringing the arms up. So we're going to start with the first part of the vinyasa. Exhale, hands forward, stretching away. Inhale, bend the knee, fingertips together, elbows high. Exhale, release. 
Inhale, warrior one. Now you're working that left hip and lower back. Exhale, release. Now, if you want to take this up a notch on that inhale movement, you can put the palms together. We worked on this, I believe, last week. So keeping the hands high. Is that clear for all of you? Yeah, like this. You can see okay. Maybe I'll just show you here. So your options are this. It can be quite tough. You can make it lower if it's too much, or this. I'm working those shoulder blades together. And that's your inhale. Does that make sense? This is kind of new because, um, yeah, I learned this this last trip to India. Okay, so finding your stride. Inhale, warrior one. So we're going to do three more. I'm keeping my stride a little bigger today. Exhale, release. That was also some feedback I got from one of my teachers. It's like, you can do a longer stride. And I was like, oh yeah, actually I can. Inhale, so if you can, that works the hip and the lower back more. I've got the palms together with the fingertips forward, drawing those shoulder blades together, elbows up. Exhale, release. I believe uh, my teacher, Mr. Schreiber, invented this one. So I'm going to do a call out to him. Inhale here. Now I've got the chin in, Jalandana Bandha. And exhale, release. So Krishmacharya said the classical warrior is actually looking forward because warriors, they don't look up. They look forward. They've got their sword. They're looking forward. They're not looking up. So the looking up is a modification. Inhale, warrior one. The hands can be like this. Palms forward or palms together. Exhale, palms together, hands forward. Looking down or straight. Inhale, warrior one with the palms at throat, shoulder blades together. Exhale, release. I like to look down because it really helps my neck to do that. You can also look forward. Inhale, looking forward. Chin lock if you can. And you can look straight ahead or slightly down. And exhale, release. Let's just do one more. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, hands forward. Stretch the back of the shoulders. Stretch like someone's pulling your hands. Inhale, palms together, fingertips forward. Exhale, release. Inhale, warrior one, chin lock, Jalandana Bandha. And exhale, release. And stepping back. The only thing with the wider strands, stance is a little hard to step front and back, is finding your samastiti. Notice how you feel in terms of the prana or the chi. Where is it? So, what I feel is just a lot of energy in this circle around the heart and the head. It feels something like that. I'm showing you with my hand. Just notice that for yourself. And you can do again if you want Shanta Mudra. So this is your left thumb mirroring for you, your right hand around it. And then you close and you make a conch shell and you place that at the throat. And just rest. Just notice if you feel energy moving in your body. So for me, it feels like, what can I explain? And when someone says that gives me shivers, when someone tells you something that resonates as being very true, that feeling, that's what I feel when I do these mudras in some part of my body. I feel all this energy like a shower of 
radiance. So you might not feel that right now, but just notice what you do feel. And that's totally fine. This is the way to meditate. All right. Okay. Now, guess what? I forgot to do the second part of the vinyasa after asking you to memorize what I did. So let's do the second half, the four men piece. Sorry, I got excited by Shankar Mudra. So again, uh, with your right foot forward, left foot back. I forgot the second half. So let's do that now. So inhale, we did warrior one or straight legs. So I'll start with the warrior one. Exhale, coming forward to your forward bend. Inhale, coming up. Again, the leg can be straight or you can bend it. And exhale, forward bend. So we're going to do this six times. You can do this in your own way. So Parsha Uttanasana is with the front leg bent. Virakdrasana, warrior, is with the front leg, sorry, uh, bent. Parsha Uttanasana is with the front leg straight. There, I think I said that right. So the one side of forward bend, leg straight, warrior, leg bent when you do your inhale movement. Hope that made sense. This version is definitely easier and then you straighten your leg at the end and you do the one side of forward bend. After you've done a round six, can you stay in the pose and breathe you can add that stiti it's called inhale lifting the chest get your rib cage forward on your thigh towards your kneecap if that makes sense the end of your rib cage and then exhale forward bend it helps lengthen the spine also does some flossing of the upper back, neck, and shoulders from a physio perspective. And you might feel this in the lower back hips as well. Now from here, if it works for you, you're going to go into a downward facing dog. If it doesn't, just come out of it and go to your samstiti. So I'm going to go into a downward facing dog. Rotating that back foot, stepping back. You can also do this position with your hands at a chair or at a wall, a half forward bend with your hands at a wall. It's so your choice. I know a number of you like this pose. I'm just going to see. Yeah, it seems like you guys are okay. I'm pedaling my feet to work the ankles, the calves. So folks, focus on the upper back, neck, and shoulders by trying to lengthen through the upper back. So press the hands into the mat and press away, lengthen the two sides of the spine, those lats. And when you're ready, you can either go into an up cat, placing the knees down, or an upward facing dog, going through your plank. And if you were just at the wall, let's come down to child's pose. Charles pose doesn't work. You can line your back with your knees to your chest.
Now working upper back, neck, and shoulders, consider bringing your hands to one side or the other, stretching through underneath the armpit into the hips. And then the other side. Do two rounds of that. If you're lying down, you can hug in one knee at a time. And you can have the opposite arm overhead. If you're hugging the right knee, you'd have the left arm overhead. You can get a stretch of one side of the body that way, as well as the lower back. Not exactly the same, but similar part of the body. Just finishing your two rounds. Get some the upper and lower back and hip. Okay. So we're going to do some um, side bends for kneeling. So you're going to come with your left hand in line with your knee. Yeah, you might need to angle your camera down now and then your other leg to the side. Now, if this doesn't work for you, you can come up on your fingertips or you can add a block or a stack of books. Um, books work really well if you don't have blocks. That's what my teachers use in Chennai, they use books. Just finding that stretch of the left side, of, or sorry, the right side of your body, so your left hand down, and then bringing that other hand up to the sky, my, um, Arch of my foot is in line with my knee, is in line with my hand. And then inhale, lengthen that top arm along your ear as long as you can. And feel that stretch into the rib cage and maybe the hip. Use this for the upper back and the lower back. And then exhale, can you sweep down? You might just come to here. Or some of you might be able to bring your buttocks back. That also gets into stretching the hips and the lower back. Inhale, sweeping up. So side on your medicine. You move back a bit because long pose. And exhale. You just come to here. Or you might be able to bring your buttocks back and stretch that thigh and hip. Inhale. It's a variation of Vashishtasana. Side plank. Exhale, release. We're going to work up to that. Inhale. And exhale. Now, if this is not working for this left wrist, because you've got wrist issues, you could make a fist like this. Get that for some of you, you can have the thumb out or the thumb in. That makes a difference in how it feels in the wrist. Now, staying in the pose, exhale, bend the elbow, turn the head, look down, turn the head, draw that shoulder down. Inhale, looking forward or up to the sky, maybe. Exhale. Turn the head, look down. My hand is in line with my shoulder, top hand to inhale, lengthen, and look maybe front or maybe even up to the sky. See how you can rotate the head. You could be doing this in Parchvaknasana side angle pose. If this is not working, that's another variation. You can just do side angle pose like a warrior but you're going to the side 
And then when you're ready, release. We'll go into your child's pose and rest. And we're going to do the other side. There's lots of vinyasas today. And again, do that side child, side to side. It really stretches those intercostal muscles of the rib cage. I use one hand, my back hand, to kind of press back, get some traction. You could put a fist underneath the forehead if you've got a neck injury or a block, something like that. Or release the head down, go to the other side. When you feel ready, coming to the center, and we're going to do the other side. Let's find the full pose before we start flowing. So aligning the knee with the arch of the foot, letting your arm down. Again, you can use a fist. You can be on the fingertips on this side. My body's a little shorter, so I go on my fingertips. Sometimes I use a block. And if it's comfortable, bringing that top arm up and then maybe extending along the ear. I feel a stretch right through the whole side body, through the upper back, the hips. You can tuck the tail under and get more into the hips. That's your inhale, exhale, sweeping forward. You can come just to here, and you could make a fist of that hand, or come back with the buttocks to the heel. That really works on the hips. Inhale, coming up. So I'm just trying to combine the upper back, neck, and shoulders with hips today. So having some fun with that. Tuck that tail underneath and exhale, release. I created this flow for my own body about 20 years ago, but it keeps kind of uh, evolving. <laughs> created it for my lower back and upper back. it around six times, a little more, a little less. When your body says I'm done, finish, that's the most important thing. And if you feel ready, staying in the position or you can keep the slow going if this feels good for you. Inhale here, exhale, bend that elbow, turn the head, look down, the hand in line with the shoulder, turning away. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend and turn. Now you can look forward or up to the sky as you inhale. Exhale, this is upper back, neck and shoulders, obviously. Inhale. Exhale. And after you've done around six, four to six, just sweeping forward into child. Again, if you're not able to do this, you could also do Parshvakanasana side angle pose. You can do that side child, side to side, stretch one side of the body at a time, feeling the stretch underneath the armpit all the way into the hip and lower back. Another side. A 
going to the center. Okay. So if it's comfortable, coming onto the hands and the knees, I'm going to show actually this way, easier for you to see. Okay, so this is something I learned in the West that um, I find very helpful for the shoulder. I'm sure many of you have done this. So you're going to take that left arm, you're going to bring it underneath, like putting a thread through a needle, it's set. And this might be your pose, stretching the back of the shoulder. Or if you like, if you want to bring that top arm up, you could just do that. Or I like to bring that right leg to the side. And then inhale, coming up. Stretch more into that top shoulder and exhale, release, looping the head down. Now, if this doesn't work for you, you could just lie down and hug one shoulder, that left shoulder across the body. Stretching the back of that left shoulder. I think this is kind of a brilliant variation. Get into stretching the back of the shoulder. This works the hip again a little bit. Some people like to bring that front arm overhead like I'm showing, or just leave it down. You could just stay here. And then going to the other side. So you wanna be careful not to overdo it. If you feel anything that feels like strain, for your body just immediately back off. So we're gonna do the other side and bring that right hand, loop it underneath. And that might be your pose. You might just stay there. That might be plenty. If you add, want to add a bit more weight to stretching the shoulder, bring your left leg to the side. Again, aligning that um, arch with your knee, inhale up. And exhale down. And stretching the back of that right shoulder. You might just stay there or up and down. This side, I'm just going to stay. And I keep trying to draw that underneath shoulder back to the opposite side. So I, like I'm drawing the rib cage towards the right. And release when you're ready. Maybe staying in the lower part of the pose for a little bit before you release to child's pose. And okay. So the next pose, side plank. Your side plank might be this, which we did earlier. So knee to arch on the left hand, left arm balancing on that might be your pose, okay? And this is a stay pose, Vashustasana. This is to build strength. You could modify it by doing this. Exhale down, inhale up. That would work the shoulder in a very nice vinyasa, okay? So you might do that. Or if you want, if you want to add on, Some of you probably know this from other parts of your life, fitness classes, etc. But this is a classical yoga pose as well. You can um, bend the elbow, start with that, and just try to lift those hips up as you inhale. And exhale, if you want, you can add the top arm. Inhale up, exhale down. Some of you might be in the full pose. And if you want, you can stretch that top leg. And of course, you could always bring the arm down. And the full pose. 
You can also do with a straight arm, that might be easier for you. The top leg extend it. Or balancing the full thing, if you're doing the full thing, you go for a downward facing dog. Balance on your side and you come up. That's a lot of work, so be careful. You can only do this for a few breaths and yeah, you look up to the sky. You can always cross that front leg over and that makes it, oh yes, much easier. I'm remembering that variation, <laughs> it's much easier. Okay, so you come out of that, go to your child's pose or your downward facing dog if you're doing the full pose. So I'm going to take you through those steps on the other side. Just be really careful. This does build strength of the core and the shoulder, but you have to be ready for it. And uh, at various times in my practice, I am definitely not ready for this. It depends. So um, first variation we worked on, just this one. So this is the simplest one. I think you can all do this. Inhale here, exhale, release down. Inhale up, that really works on flexibility of the back and the front of the shoulder. So stretching the front when you go up and stretching the back when you go down. So that might be your pose. Or you can try, some of you with wrist issues, just balancing on the um, forearm here. Stretching that top leg, perhaps coming down and up. That might be your pose. Or you can go into the full pose from downward facing dog. Checking onto one hand. Let's see, this is my harder side. Let's see how I am today. And I'm gonna bring that front foot forward, right away, because my harder side. And again, you could do a bit of a vinyasa like that, or like that. Just finding your variation of the pose. And when you feel ready, coming into your downward facing dog or child. Everyone come to child if you're not there. So it's great pose if you can do it. Lots of variations. So I hope you found one. Uh, one I didn't show today is with uh, the forearm at the chair or at the wall. Uh, the Palm at the wall, forearm on the seat of the chair. And one last strength pose for the shoulders. Okay, so step one is just in cat cow. So you just do cat cow. Inhale up, exhale, press away. You can do this with making fists, okay? If um, your wrists are bothering you or your fingers, you've got rheumatoid arthritis or something, arthritis in the hands. You could put your hands on blocks. You could also do the standing, holding the sides of a chair, okay? So that might be your pose. For some of you who wanna take this up a notch, you can try to do a forearm plank And 
we might go towards kids out there called dolphin. So something like this, that might feel really good. That could be an exhale and then inhale, coming forward, exhale back, or just stay in one of those positions. Obviously, strengthening for the shoulders. And you could maybe easier go from downward facing dog to plank. That's definitely a lot easier for my body. And you could stay in any one of those positions for a few breaths. doing the cat cow you could also add opposite arm and leg inhale extend opposite arm a lot leg exhale bring it back and then do the other side you can do that standing with the hands at the chair or with your knees on the floor hands on the ground When you stay in the plank, try not to let your hips sag, press away like this. And when you're ready, explain it to your child. That brings quite a bit of heat in. The reward is coming. I know there's lots of different things. If you've got wrist issues, what I just showed is going to be really torture. And when my wrists are acting up, I can't do any of those poses. So just know, you know, you have to modify according to the day and that's all good. But when you can do it, try to do it, right? And when you can't, you don't. So lying <laughs> down, it's always better not to fight reality. When we do, we definitely suffer. Uh, mentally is the worst of it. Lying down, putting your feet at the wall or bending your knees. We're gonna chill out now. Inhale, arms coming up overhead. Tadaka mudra. Exhale, bringing your right arm down, turning your head to the right. The back of the head is coming towards my top arm. You're nice and warm now. And just stay here as you exhale, turn the head a little bit more. Inhale, release by untwisting just a little bit. Exhale, twist. I've got my palm off of my lower hand and upper hand. Inhale, untwist a little bit. Your legs can be straight or bent. You want to be quite warm before you do this. When you're ready, going to the other side, untwisting the head, bringing both arms overhead, stretching. Again, you can always have bent elbows for this part or a bolster behind you or a pillow. Exhale, bringing your left hand down, turning your nose towards the left, the back of the head, Bring it more towards that top arm so that the top of the head is aligned with the base of the spine. Just notice where you feel the stretch. As you exhale, try to twist a little bit more. Inhale, ease off on the twist. Keep this going. And untwist, inhale, center. Arms together or interlock the fingers. Stay here, Chidaka Mudra. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button. And if this is too much, put the palms on top of the head.
Hold after exhale. Pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button, and chin lock. Hold. Two to four seconds. And inhale into the chest, into the belly. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in. Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, Jalandhara Bandha, Chin Lock, all the locks. Hold after exhale, the lower back is into the floor. Inhale again. On that exhale again, if you want, you can bring the hands down to the top of the head. Or you can have the palms together, that can work better. When you're ready, you're going to rest, bringing your hands down. We're going to take a rest. We're going to do that Shanka Mudra, that um, Kong Shell Mudra. So you're going to take your right hand and you're going to place it over the thumb of your left. And then create that shell and put it at your throat if that's comfortable. Legs straight or knees bent. And just rest here. This is the Vashuti Chakra. Chakra means wheel. It's a wheel of energy. It's, it's um, a marma point or a nadi. Point, point of a lot of energy within the channels of energy. The 72,000 channels of energy or little rivers that run from the belly button through the whole body. There's a big center at the heart, the Anahata Chakra, that we worked on earlier. At that one, I invite you to make a mudra of a lotus flower, if that works for your shoulders. I'm going to show that to you standing so you can see. So it's like this. You might need to see this, sorry. <laughs> Break you out of your vibe, but it looks like, it looks like a lotus flower. that made sense yeah like that so thumbs together uh little fingers together and all the fingers apart and you place that like this or you could try like that <laughs> when you're lying down so we're just going to stay there and we're going to hang out as a meditation that's definitely easier with fingertips towards the face but you could try with it out it's a little harder might put blocks under the elbows doing that. And just feel that lotus flower at the heart. And again, remember, if it's too much, just rest the hands at the heart in any way like that. Just remember that deepest heart desire. The lotus flower open, the lotus flower like nasturtiums are hydrophobic. That means the, the water doesn't stick to them. This is a metaphor of resilience and what the yogis mean by detachment. It doesn't mean you're cold and closed off. Very, very open. But the life experiences, they come to you, but you understand They are just part of the constant change around you and you remain stable and open. You're undisturbed by what lands on you. You just ride the waves of it. Let those drops of water fall off. So we'll come back to that later. Just wanted to introduce that mudra to you. Okay, we're going to 
do one more set before we get you into Shavasana relaxation with a bit more meditation. So Dvipadapitam, ankles and knees aligned, or you could have one foot forward if you've got one hip that's higher than the other or the other, or both legs a little forward. You have a block between the legs or a belt on the thighs. Inhale, lifting the hips up. Rolling those shoulders underneath. Exhale, stay. Now you might stay here and breathe, or you might bring your hands your wrists in line with the elbows at waist height, or you might bring the hands to shoulder height and tuck those elbows underneath, or you might have the hands to the sky and press down on those elbows and place the hands on the rib cage. So we're gonna stay here, we've warmed up a lot. Let's pick which one works for your shoulders. You could interlock the fingers underneath, roll the shoulders more underneath, and I invite you also, if you want to get into the hips a bit more, inhale, come up on the toes and lift the hips up higher. That will also get more into the chest. Exhale, heels down. This is too much. You can inhale, come up, exhale, come down with your arms coming overhead as you inhale, exhale, arms coming down. And when you're ready, gradually rolling down. Stretching your legs long. This is possible for your body. Inhale overhead to the floor behind you. Exhale, bringing in one knee at a time, left to right, right to left, your choice. Inhale, lengthen, Tadaka Mudra. Exhale, Ekapada Apanasana, knee to chest. Keep doing this side to side, or if you like, you can do full Apanasana, drawing the legs in. Or just apanasana, inhale, knees away, exhale, knees towards you, okay? So your choice, I'm doing Tadaka Mudra, inhale, exhale, apanasana. Drawing the shoulder blades down at the end of the exhale. Do one side at a time. When you're ready, just lying down. If you have a bolster, you could put it lengthwise from the top of your head to the base of your rib cage. You could put a rolled mat like that. We did that last week, I believe. Or you could just stay here. Classically, the feet just turn out naturally. But you can have them parallel to keep the hips aligned. Just visualizing a lotus flower opening at the heart center. 
Pick a color, maybe it's yellow, maybe it's pink, maybe it's white. Just visualize that you are that flower. That lily pads all around you, filling up your body space. The center of you is that open lotus flower at the heart. Maybe you're in a warm lake this beautiful day, feeling the sun above you and the warm water below you. Just maybe visualize a paddleboarder coming by and they, they splash you with some water. You just see those drops of water on your open heart flower. If you have any stressful thoughts, or experiences that you're dealing with with your life right now, you can put those experiences, those thoughts, those people in drops of water and just one at a time, let them drop off. So I recommend just working with one thought or one experience or one person. Just put their name or some sort of visualization in each of those drops and just see that drop, drop off into the lake, one at a time, moving clockwise or anti-clockwise around your open lotus flower at the heart. You might say to yourself, let go as you do that or let be. There's nothing coming to mind, just enjoy the visualization. You can just see the drops of water fall off and just say, let go, even if you don't know what's in them. back to this anytime something is bothering you stressful thought or emotion it's impeding your ability to feel that radiance at your heart just to end with bringing that mudra that padma mudra of the lotus flower at the heart if that works for you you can do this lying down or seated The lotus flower also is a symbol of wisdom at the heart. Within that, the center of the lotus, there's, there's a jewel, a money, this jewel. Om Mani Padme Hum, this is a Tibetan Buddhist Mantra, I'm going to chant for you. Om Mane Padme Hum. Om Mane Padme.
Padme Hum. Om Mane 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 Padme Hum. Oh.